Go ahead. Uh, Kyle, how's the, uh, the practice fields? Were the conditions okay that you could have a normal practice without any adjusting? Yeah, we had a normal practice. And do you we didn't. practice there the rest of the week? Oh, yeah. We're not going to change our whole schedule up. We'd have to go too early in the morning, mess everything up. So this is the best choice we got. Are you satisfied with that choice? Um, we're here. We're practicing on it. I mean, everyone has their preferences and wish things were better, but we'll deal with the field how it is. Hi, Kyle. AJ Ross with CBS Sports. Can you talk about, um, you know, just the game planning you already started last week, the opening script, how that communication flow has been with Brock, what he's liking, and how that continues into this week? Uh, yeah, we put in a lot last week. Um, today was really the official time we uh, make it official. I mean, we correct some things from last week, some things we didn't like we took out. Uh, a few things we didn't have in last week that we had more time to look at we put in, and now we'll run it back. Today was Wednesday. We'll do two more days of it, and then we work on the openers Friday night and Saturday morning and we'll install the Saturday night. Hey Kyle, yeah. um, you were around the 49ers organization when you were a young uh, man, a young boy. How much did you ab absorb of the mentality of those players of the Super Bowl or bust mentality that was always with that team during that dyna the, the dynastic years? Um, I, I don't know. I, th I mean, I'd like to say it was from hanging around the team, but it probably wasn't. I was just a ball boy who got that in um, training camp for a little bit. But just being around my dad my whole life, I think, um, definitely helps you understand the urgency of everything. I remember going to three Super Bowls um, before sixth grade when we were in the AFC and he was a coordinator. And I think the closest one of those, they lost by, I want to say 19 which or 17, the first one versus the Giants. And they lost 55 to 10 versus the Niners in the last one. So I kind of got used to that growing up, just being over in the AFC and then um, went to the Niners and won it. And that's what was so cool going back to Denver and then went in at that, um, my senior year in high school versus Green Bay. Um, I think the first time in 13 years that the AFC had won. So um, just going through that and knowing how your dad is before him, after him, all that stuff, you just, you get the, even though you don't realize you're learning it, but you know, those are your life experiences. You got a very good idea of how it works, and then I've been fortunate enough to be in a few of these of my own, and um, they're not much different than how they were and how I remember them growing up. Uh, hello, Coach uh, Victor Odier from Touchdown Mac 2. Uh, before the season, there was question about how injury could affect your team. And finally, you will arrive at the Super Bowl with a very healthy team. Did you change anything in the physical preparation this year compared to previous years? You said with injuries? Yeah. Um, I mean, we always tweak stuff. I mean, we got a group of guys who they look into the science and everything as well as anyone. Um, I don't think there was anything drastic this year. We've been doing that pretty consistent for the last five years. Um, but it's a week to week thing. It depends how your players feel after a Sunday game. It's what they tell me on Monday. It's what they tell me Wednesday before practice. Um, not every player is in the same situation, too. So you adjust it for individuals, but um, not too much different. Down front. Uh, Kyle, your offense has been the most copied in the league. Each year you continue to shrink the field. Uh, no team has run more condensed formations than the 49ers this year. At what point in your career did you start to realize the game would be played like in between the numbers and maybe even in between the hashes? And can you recall a play that made you think like, yeah, the game's going toward this way? Um. I just remember when I started and um, went to Tampa Bay has a quality control and I was drawing everything in books and stuff and everything was drawn out from wide splits nothing was from tight splits and then I always looked at everything when I first started through a receiver standpoint just because that's what I played most of uh, my life growing up and it was so cool to watch how it helped people get open um, how it looked one way out here it looked totally different in here some people wouldn't even bump you back then it was like they only could bump outside the numbers you could get the bump off every time you could get leverage with people change stuff up and I think it started that way just from seeing how you could help people get open and then you start to learn the run game you start to learn how safeties fit how leverage is different and things like that and then it just evolves to a lot more Corner left. right here Kyle what are, what are some of the challenges that play calling head coaches face in game management and how have you evolved in handling both since you became a head coach um, I think since I became a head coach I mean I think offensive coaches you're always thinking about 
the time and stuff. I mean, play callers, just being a coordinator, you know, being able to call plays for the nine years before becoming a head coach, um, I think gave me a lot of experience. I mean, you never call a play without having an idea of what's on the clock, uh, the down and distance, the score, all of that stuff. So um, it's always in your mind every time you watch football, every time you do anything. And I do think though, once becoming a head coach, it's you from game management and stuff I mean always the the clock issues are usually the same but how to win the game becomes a little bit different I think when you're th calling plays and paying that stuff attention as a coordinator it's more about how do you score how, how do you get points how do you outscore the other team because you don't watch the other team's offense you don't have a good feel of your defense you're not watching the game as it goes you're just getting ready for your series and I think becoming a head coach you realize how to call plays how to use the time and stuff not just to get points but really just try to help you win the game Hey, Coach. In the Lions game and throughout the regular season, Brock would throw over his body over into the middle of the field. Do you ever get nervous when he does this, and do you ever tell him to stop? Um, yeah, when he when he makes a bad decision do it, doing it, I do. Um, and if he did that a bunch, then... Um, then it'd be something that we had to put a stop to. But usually when Brock goes across his body, I think he usually makes the right play. I mean, quarterbacks do make that here and there. Um, but if that's something you're just doing a bunch and making mistakes, you got to end that pretty fast. you got to have a reason to go back there, not just hoping you're getting lucky. Back center. Hey, Kyle, you know, you and several of the players have suffered through, you know, heartbreaking losses like we've talked about over the years. How do you think those calluses that were developed helped in the last couple games with you making those second half comebacks? Um, not much at all. I mean, had a lot of comebacks before those calluses too. Um, it's, um, I mean, I think just the more you coach football, the more you go through, the more you don't, you don't try to make any absolute answers or philosophies in anything. You understand there's so many variables, there's so many different situations, and it comes down to one game. So you don't just sit there and be like, man, I learned this last game, I'm not going to do that the next game. Well, that might be the right answer the next game. It might be the right answer um, the next quarter. I mean, everything you got to take into account. This isn't just a, um, a plus and minus game. You have to evaluate everything, and there's a flow with how those 22 people move in the situation, and that's stuff you got to, that's why there's, you're never done. You're always continuing to work and continue to try to come up with a, whatever the decision is that gives you the best chance to win, but I promise you there's no consistent um, automatic answer. Good afternoon, Coach. Um, how do you manage the, your players' pressure, mainly those players who uh, played uh, four years ago uh, against the Chiefs? Uh, do you pr uh, practice any special, execute any special dynamics for these players? Um, the guys who played in the Super Bowl last? Um, no, we're just getting ready for this game. I don't think last Super Bowl has anything to do with this game. Um, just like last week doesn't have anything to do with this game. Um, what's good about the guys who have been here before, especially the younger guys who came here, uh, you know, they can talk to the younger guys who are coming now and kind of tell them how they felt at that time and then how you feel after. I mean, it's a cool week. You get caught up in a lot of stuff, but, I mean, you don't remember all this stuff. Uh, you remember the game. Um, and people for the rest of their lives should remember that game if you won that game. And that's really all that matters. And you can say that, but it's cool when people have gone through that, so um, people tend to listen more. That is the truth. That's how it goes. And all this stuff's fun and neat, but... You forget all this stuff. It all passes. What you remember is who won or lost that. 49ers head coach Kyle Shanahan there. Uh, he said the last Super Bowl appearance that the 49ers had against the Kansas City Chief, he said he, that has nothing to do with what's going on in this 2023-2024 season. However, Kyle Shanahan has been a part of several now Super Bowls that have not quite ruled in his favor. Uh, being a part of the largest blown leads in Super Bowl history. Kyle Shanahan, a part of two of those. I think everyone remembers that 2016 Super Bowl, that 28-3 score that eventually turned into a Patriots Super Bowl championship. And then also more recently, the 49ers uh, up 21-10 over the Kansas City Chiefs before. And that was entering into the fourth quarter before the Chiefs ultimately being crowned Super Bowl champs. Kyle Shanahan was the offensive coordinator in Atlanta, the head coach in San Francisco during those times, looking to turn those tides and perhaps a fresh, clean slate going on in Super Bowl 58.